Hello YouTube, this is going to be a video on the 3x3x7 three by three by fully proportional. Sorry I haven't made a video in a little while, I've been working on this, which took quite some time. So, uh, this puzzle was made out of a cube for you 3x3x7. Three by three by you might be thinking, well, if it's made out of a 3x3x7, three by three by how is this any different? But, it was 3x3x7 three by three by with squished layers, so it was really only as big as a standard 3x3. Three with just the top, like the middle layer being the same, but the, the this layer having been split in three and just be a cube. And as you can see, it's been extended four cubies more than that. So it's, uh, it, that's, that's the difference. It was like a cube, now it's a huge tower. So this puzzle is definitely by far the biggest cuboid I have ever made. Uh, I've only made two other cuboids. One of them is the 2x2x3, which is pretty ridiculously small compared to this. And the 2x2x5, which is kind of in pieces and broken right now. So this puzzle is fully functional, not just extended. Uh, all the layers turn. These, these turns, however, are quite locky and they kind of make the puzzle not so fun to turn. As you can see, they don't really want to go. I'll make it go. All right, one second. You see they lock up. And they kind of can be a bit hard to start sometimes. This is actually a particularly bad one. There we go. But just to, yeah. So, there's one. <laughs> oh, this one's going to go much easier. You don't have to put it flat on the table like this. I just want it a bit easier to line the puzzle. So, as you can see, when it's at a half turn like this, these pieces, they aren't going anywhere, which is nice. And the puzzle does have some issues of stability. So you can kind of see the internal workings of this puzzle here, but I'll go into the mechanism a bit more in detail in a minute. So that is the checkerboard pattern. As you can see, this puzzle is not very stable, but it is fully functional or you would not be able to do that. So the reason why I made this puzzle was simply because I wanted the challenge. Uh, I don't really care for cuboids that much. I'm not a big fan of them. I don't know how to solve them, and I don't care. I don't want to know how to solve them. I don't really care that much. Uh, but I do like making puzzles, which is why I made such a big cuboid. Uh, you can see uncheckering that went a lot better. I don't know why, but it did. Anyways, so yeah. Uh, size comparison to the 2x2x3, obviously no comparison at all. Cube for you 3x3x4, it's the standard cube, so you can get the idea. You just stack a 3x3 three three on top of a cube for you 3x3x4, three three and bam, you got the same thing. But, uh, except real. And uh, compared to a 9x9, nine nine, it's about two layers, a little over two layers taller than a 9x9. Nine nine. You can get that idea there. So it is a pretty big cube. Kind of ridiculously big if you think about it. I mean, like, you can get your hands around it. Like, not too hard, actually. It's still within grasp of hands, but it's, uh, it's getting, it's getting there. It's kind of getting ridiculous. The top layer, as you can see, is a bit, uh, it almost kind of makes me think of when I saw a video on the 5x5x9. It's extending up two layers like this, except on a 5x5 five five to make 9, which is kind of similar, and these corners are a bit, you know, loosely in there. The top layer turning's not that bad, despite seeming a bit unstable. Uh, turns a lot better going counterclockwise, I've found, than clockwise, but it does turn clockwise, just much more catchy. Not sure why exactly, but it can do it which is important. Uh, these layers are really weird, the second to the bottom layers. 
These ones they turn this way with relative ease, but this way, oh my god, this is kind of lucky, but like it, it gets a lot more locky. It doesn't, it's not one finger. You can't turn it with one finger. You, when this one, you can turn with one finger. So it's a bit more locky in that direction, I've found, and sometimes it doesn't even go at all, like right, or no, maybe it's this side. On one of the sides, it doesn't go at all, but it is getting better with breaking in, I've found. But, uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, this, what else to talk about this puzzle? Uh, it was using casting. So this is not a, it's not similar to any other puzzle I've made, because say with the 9x9, it's pure epoxy sculpt. So you, there's no casting, there's no duplicating of pieces. All these pieces were handled, like, made by hand. With this one, some of the pieces are casted. So these pieces are casted, the corners are casted, the inner corners are casted. So these three, so it's kind of U-shape. These edges were actually made by hand. As you can kind of see, you can see epoxy sculpt here, and these centers are just two cubies glued together, and then epoxy sculpted to make a nice finish. Uh, this cubie isn't done too well, but uh, yeah, and then you can see these pieces. Uh, now that I think, this is actually the original that I used for casting, and this is a casted piece, so you can kind of see this little bit of uh, off white here, and that's because the spray paint chips off really easy. You can kind of also see it here. So the spray paint doesn't take to the plastic, um, to the casted resin pieces too well, but uh, it's nothing too bad. I don't really mind it that much. Um, from afar, it actually looks very nice. And this doesn't exactly complete any kind of uh, collection I got for 3x3xN puzzles. I basically got the 3x3x4, 3x3x3, Super 3x3x2, and Super 3x3x1. Or Scramble Cube, the one that goes like this. Anyways, so I am missing the 3x3x5, which is actually a lot more common than the 3x3x7, and the 3x3x6, which is quite difficult to make as it looks like. You have to make them out of these. Now, an interesting thing about this cuboid is that you could take pieces from this and pieces from this to make a 3x3x8 and 9 or 3x3x8, and you can make a 3x3x9. Because basically, if you think about it, these 2x3x3 blocks here and here are centered around a 3x3x3. But you could use a 3x3x4 as the core, and I'm not going to quite go into details on exactly how this could be done, but you could basically swap this 3x3 section for this 3x3x4 section, making a 3x3x8. But, once you've made the 3x3x8, this has an internal layer that you could expose. So technically you could shift the whole puzzle up one more cubie to make a 3x3x9. Which would become a bit, uh, a bit crazy. Like, these pieces, you would need to basically cut out this cubie like this, and then replace it with a chunk of one of these edges and then extend it up and then shift the whole thing over one and all that fun stuff but uh, it would even try from himself uh, did not make a 3x3x9 but he did make the 3x3x8 so that's just kind of a little bit on even bigger cuboids that you can make with this puzzle so yeah, I don't have too much more to say about this. Uh, I guess I'll show the mechanism here. It's not uh, anything too special. Got your standard edge. I'll just take it apart a little bit because there's quite a lot of pieces here. So here's the corners. So you got your standard corner. You can see where the three original layers were glued together. I don't know why I didn't epoxy sculpt that. But uh, anyways, so this corner is actually made by gluing together the three um, layers and then basically just creating a cut here. And this is a casted corner piece, which actually, the, the, I'm not going to explain exactly why, but the corners, uh, 
they're a bit messed up, these ones. That's why there's kind of little imperfections in the mechanism, because they, uh, the piece broke in the mold while I was making the rubber molds for this. And basically it broke and kind of went off a little bit, so it's not perfect. But yeah, you can kind of see little scratches here where the original color of the casted piece is coming out. But anyways, so these fit together like that. So this one slides around like there. And then basically you got this super long kind of corner here. And this is made out of casted resin. And it's a bit flexible, but it's actually very strong. And this is one of the reasons why I went for casting, because if this was made out of epoxy sculpt and super glue, which the original piece that went into the mold to make this was, it would have a very good chance it would shatter, because anything this tiny that's like a super glue bond would just break. It's not as strong as a fully casted piece like this, which is actually quite strong, and it's got a little foot here. And then these pieces just fit together like that, with one more corner, and basically these kind of create a split corner, which creates the three cubies like that, onto the uh, edges here, and then that's as far as I'm gonna take it apart. You guys will probably get the rest. So, we've got this is the very bottom edge, which is basically, again, you can kind of see the faint lines. It's three layers glued together to create kind of a piece like this which is, almost reminds me of when you make a 3x3x4 piece. It's almost exactly the same, actually. It might actually be the exact same. Where you got this piece, and you cut away the bottom section here, like that. And then you glue half a cubie on top. And you can kind of see how these are the exact same. Actually, no, this is. This piece right here could be, if you wanted to, a piece of a 3x3x5. Three by three by so this is actually an interchangeable piece for 3x3x5. Three by three by but it kind of gets different, because you can see on the 3x3x4 three by three by you got this big fat edge. And then that would cut off and be extended kind of thing. Here, you can see that the next piece is this, which is very thin, like it has a very thin kind of hollow shell structure here. And then just a little bit of gap for the next piece and this little foot. And these basically fit together like this. So like that, you can see that here. And really, I mean, like, if this piece was, like, if this extra cubie here wasn't glued on and you could just sand this away and it really be almost exactly the same dimensions as a 3 by 3 by 5 QB. In fact, not quite exactly, but almost exactly the same, but not quite. There would be a little bit of difference, but pretty much nothing. And then you got this big, big edge here. This is actually the original one. You can see it's pretty nice. So this is a completely handmade one. This is not casted. And none of them are casted. They're all handmade because I didn't really want to make a mold for something I could actually make by hand pretty well. I mean, it's very good. Compared to like this, would be quite hard to make by hand over and over again. I made one, but yeah. And this one, again, kind of hard to make by hand. But this is a big, kind of bulky edge. And I had already made all this, this section. So basically the original piece went up to here. You can kind of see a faint line. And then the rest is cast, um, like extended. So this whole section here is actually just epoxy sculpt that I blobbed on. And then I used a belt sander to kind of smooth it down to the like same shape as this little piece right here. And then extended a cubie onto it. And I did fill it with uh, some molding clay here. But that was just for... Uh, just in case I was going to cast this, because this was the original, so I would have might have casted it, so I would have filled these gaps in, right? But I didn't, so it doesn't matter. Anyways, so then these three edges fit together like this. Kind of pretty simple mechanism. Nothing too fancy. And the problem is, this mechanism works very well for a puzzle that is a cube, but when it gets to a puzzle bigger than a cube, like extended like this, it starts becoming a bit of a problem uh, 
the Trifum version of this puzzle seems to be, like, I wouldn't say more stable, because when the layers are offset, it seems a bit off, like, not offset, but, uh, I don't know how should I explain this? Oh, Jesus, falling apart here. Uh, like, when the, these big layers are offset by 90 degrees, so like this, seems like the pieces don't stay in as much but these pieces they stand very nicely there's no there's no pops this puzzle does not pop I don't even know if it's capable of popping it just does not pop at all so there is that which is nice so yeah uh, I guess no I'm not gonna scramble this puzzle uh, I'm, I generally scramble puzzles and then try to solve them, but I don't know how to solve cubies. I don't even know where, I mean, cubies, cuboids. So I don't even know where I would start with a puzzle like this. And I don't really solve cuboids. I just don't. So that doesn't matter. So anyways, yeah, that's about it. Uh, really fun build. I've been hoping to make something like this for, well, hoping to make this puzzle for some time. I, was, I learned a lot about casting in the process, which was nice. Uh, so now I'm into casting pieces because all these corners are cast and these edges and such are casted. So yeah, I learned a lot about casting, which means I can, you know, make puzzles with casts, obviously. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, if any of you guys want to know about the 8x8, it's on its way. Uh, I have gotten it fully assembled, so big pillowed 8x8. It's actually quite huge. It's It feels a lot bigger than the standard 7x7, but uh, it's just a little bit bigger. But it's pretty cool with the pillowed. It looks like the, eight, uh, the VQ8 kind of looking thing. But the problem is, once it was fully assembled, it didn't turn at all. It was too stiff. It was like painfully stiff. It was like cube for you, gigaminx times a million stiff. So. I basically tried and tried and tried to make turns, and eventually a piece broke, no surprise. So I'm completely rethinking my approach to that. Uh, I, I was using casting pieces for that too, but I found that the casted pieces don't replace normal pieces in that puzzle, like the little hooks of the 4x4 centers. Uh, you know, they spin around in standard Rubik's style 4x4 core. They uh, Casted pieces seem to cause too much friction. It's a very specific, very perfect kind of piece that needs to go in there, and casting isn't accurate enough. Or the casted resin pieces just have a different texture to them that makes it so there's too much friction. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top half of the casted pieces with the 7x7 core chunk, and then... Never mind. It's too complicated to explain. But anyways, that's it. That's the 3x3x7. Thank you for watching.